to post workout chats with Coach Marco. I'm your host, Coach Marco, and I'm here with Dawn, and she will be um, sharing some nutrition information, um, some great stuff, and I'll let her introduce herself. Hi, my name is Dawn Reese. Um, I am a AFPA certified holistic nutritionist, and I work as a health coach focused on helping people uh, incorporate healthy nutrition, uh, mainly focused on whole food, plant-based eating uh, for health and longevity. Uh, I have a company named Epimony, Holistic Health and Wellness, and happy to be here. Thank you. Yeah, and I want to uh, definitely, I'll share the link in the descriptions for my video. Um, I'll get that link on there so people can find you. Great. Yeah, so we're here today mostly because um, for me in fitness, this is a time of year where people are in uh, work competitions to win money with each other here, like just um, weight loss, a lot of weight loss competitions. Um, people are, are definitely back into committing themselves to getting healthier in general. And um, this is a time of year where that is a, a big, um, kind of like a, just a big surge within our industry. And I know uh, for those in uh, weight loss competitions, um, weight management can be um, thought of as, as just uh, something where I can work out and, and really lose the weight and cut calories and, and, and lose my weight fast. And um, I think uh, a lot of people, are unaware how important nutrition and dieting is. You know, what you eat is actually more of the battle. A little unaware with holistic mm -hmm. nutrition, and I, I kind of did a little background information check with some of the stuff, but if you wanna maybe go over what exactly you do. Yeah, um, so I started mainly because uh, health reasons, not necessarily me, but in my family. So the people that I've worked with, um, my mom was, the main one because she had been diagnosed with breast cancer. So okay. that was my main focus was, you know, f what foods to eat to help prevent um, reoccurring breast cancer and to prevent any other cancers in the future. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, I have other clients that, you know, so, uh, have issues with like high cholesterol mm -hmm. or thyroid issues and, you know, looking to get off the medication or prevent going on the medication. Mm -hmm. But, you know, pretty much anyone that's looking to improve their diet, to help you know prevent disease, and promote longevity. And those are the kinds of people that I, I would work with. You know, I'm not, I'm not here to like convert people. You know, no, right, yeah. That's you know not my. I'm not going to put my time into that. But people who are interested in learning about it, that's what I'm here for. Yeah, and uh, eating is is more for you, like a view of a, from a viewpoint of a lifestyle mm -hmm. um, um, aspect, right? You you look at the way you eat as um, sort of a way of life. Yes. Right. Yes. So because, you know, I, I, I'm sure we'll talk about dieting later on, but, you know, dieting is short term, you know, mm -hmm. it's temporary and most time, almost all the time, it's not going to work. So that's why we look at it as a lifestyle. And the way I help clients is, you know, teach them, you know, what they should be eating, the things they should be avoiding, and then how to incorporate that into their daily life and you know keep them on track for however long we're working together to that way it actually becomes a lifestyle because i mean it's a lifestyle for me now and i've been mm -hmm. doing it for over a year and it's like second nature like i don't even have to think about it and i yeah. think that's where i want to get my clients at yeah um i think my my dad before he passed he had really converted his eating into um disease prevention and he would have me grow um some sprouts in the jars yes. and and you know and um, a lot of those, um, like radishes, those, those bitter, um, yes. those vegetables, um, he really looked into the science of cancer prevention and stuff. So, yes. um, I really got into that for a while. Um, it's hard, it's hard to maintain. Um, I like, I'm a person who loves food, yeah. all kinds of food. <laughs> and so, and I'm, I'm in a stage of my life where I kind of eat a, a kind of whatever, I want to eat and yeah. it's kind of like how I've lived, but I, I do, I have the awareness of what goes into my body, kind of like what, um, different foods mm -hmm. can do. Yep. Um, and not only like body composition, but health is yes. the, the eating is like all of that. And it's like almost, yeah. it surprised me a lot when he got into that. I started getting into it and, um, I realized how much food is, um, related to like everything that happens in your body. It's right. like a huge thing. Yeah. Um, so, um, most people that are attuned with, um, how to relate your, your fitness to 
your physique and how you look right. is, um, you know, they're very just interested in macronutrients right. and calories. Yeah. So those are the two things that can shape um, your body to how you want to look if you put it in with exercise. Right. Um, and I know that you'll probably have a lot more to share other than just calorie count and macronutrient mm-hmm. distribution. Yeah. Right. So, um, but let's start the conversation with that. Let's keep it simple because, yeah. um, nutrition in terms of body composition and how much you weigh, those things can be, I guess, simple, right? You, yeah. you can really look at it as, um, caloric deficit, meaning, you know, your calories are. Uh, the intake are less than, the or output, right? yeah, the output. Um, and then where your macronutrients come into play are, you know, your proteins, fats, and carbs and how those should be, um, weighed. Um, it varies for different individuals, you know, mm-hmm. males, females. Um, have you ever given recommendations, um, for anyone trying to, to cut weight, um, or change their body type? Not their body type, but their the way it looks. Size, yeah, yeah like size. Get, to get to a, a healthy BMI. Sure. Right, yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So yeah. So so honestly, you know, the way uh, holistic nutrition, the approach is, we're not. And then, like I said, this is a lifestyle. It's not a diet. So yeah. you with working with me, you're not going to be counting anything. There's no yeah. calorie counting. There's no macros involved. It is having a well-rounded diet um, focused on whole plant foods. So you're going to have your whole grains, you're going to have your protein, Mm -hmm. you're going to have your legumes or beans, and then your fruits and vegetables. Um, so yeah, you're not going to be counting anything and you don't necessarily have to, as long as you're eating those whole plant foods and staying away from, you know, saturated fats and obviously processed foods. Yeah. Everybody knows these yeah. highly processed junk foods aren't healthy for us. Right. Um, so as long as you're avoiding those, but it's not like you can't, you know, have a treat here and there because I sure do. Well, that comes, okay. That, yeah. that brings me to a point where I always talk to people about, you know, um, when you eat healthy foods and, and you're wondering what, what type, what foods are healthy. I think everyone has a general idea of what foods are, are and are not. It's, um, the, the matter of, finding the ones that work for you regularly. Like what can I, I mean, I know that, um, an apple can be healthy versus like whatever French fries, right? Just simple. Um, I know that everybody knows that like, it's not, it's not rocket science, but you do want to figure out, well, what, what can I like that, that can fall into the healthy category. And, um, I know for a lot of people it's, it's there, you know, the information is kind of there, but you have to, so I guess, uh, what, what type of um, foods do you normally steer people toward? Because um, you sort of like you got to get some of this and some of that um, right. kind of more specifics, I guess. Right. We need a variety. And then I, I'm so glad you said it that way, because obviously the healthiest, you know, the healthiest food, meaning like maybe the healthiest vegetable or the healthiest fruit or the healthiest, healthiest grain or healthiest bean is going to be the one you're going to eat. Right. Mm-hmm. If, you know, if you're not going to eat it, it's not going to help you. Um, so yeah, I mean, the way I work with, uh, clients is they fill out like, you know, a seven day food record Mm -hmm. and they record everything they eat and drink for the entire day. And looking at that, I can get an idea of what, what they like, what their tastes are. And then I can help substitute things. Um, and like you said, most people have an general idea of what's healthy and sometimes it's, it's a little skewed. You know, if you go to the grocery store, you're going to pick up, you know, a loaf of whole wheat, 100% whole wheat bread. But if you're reading the ingredients and you're looking at the fiber content, it's really not a healthy bread, you know, and that's the problem because all this, you know, product packaging is saying, oh, this is healthy, 100% that or sugar free this or fat free that, Mm -hmm. um, which most people look for. And a lot of the times those aren't healthy choices. And that's another thing that I do with my clients is I take them on a grocery store tour so we can go up and down the aisles. We can, you know, look at the things that they normally buy. I can make suggestions for healthy substitutions. Mm -hmm. And I think it's interesting. So you go, you guys don't calorie count, um, but you have seen results of losing weight. Yeah. Um, just in general. Um, so how I, 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 I know it can work. I just, for, for me, when I first, um, 
wanted to, to lose weight in my life when I really took it seriously mm -hmm. as a professional, um, that was all I did. Calorie counting and macronutrients. And I was able to lose the weight. Yeah. Um, it's, it's numbers. But it, yeah, that's, that's what it is. It's, right. it's, it's, it's um, so tedious. Yes. I had, um, what was the app that I used? Um, there's a bunch of them now. Yeah. There was one main one where you can enter in what you ate. Gosh, what was that one called? Um, and you enter in every little ingredient. Mm -hmm. Every, it counts every calorie. Yeah. Um, it, it, it makes your, your graph for your macronutrients. And, um, and, it, and it really shows you where you're at with that. Yeah. And um, it was, it, it got a little easier over time because you can save meals. So yeah. if you enter in all the ingredients for your meals and you have that meal repeatedly. And that's one thing about dieting is that you want a, a nice routine. Yeah. Foods that you like that you can eat repeatedly. Make sure. it easier to go through your day to day. Um, that got easier. I got to save my meal so I could just punch it in. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it, it's, it's a lot of, it's a lot. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. Yeah. yeah. And, and like, like I said, who wants to do math? You know, I just want to enjoy my food. So you what, know? what helps you without counting know that this stuff will, this, the whole plan is sufficient enough. As long as you're focusing on um, eating the right types of carbohydrates, because we know there's different kinds, right? There's simple carbs and then there's complex carbs. Mm -hmm. Um, so you're going to want to go towards your complex carbs, which are going to be your fruits, your vegetables, your legumes, um, your whole grains, not, you know, your white, you know, flour, white sugar, white rice, white pasta. Mm -hmm. Um, those are all stripped of it, all nutrients. So there's nothing, they're just empty calories, mm -hmm. right? So that's where you're going to have to do all that counting. Mm -hmm. Um, so if you're eating those foods, they're full of fiber and that's the key is that fiber makes you feel full and it makes you feel full quick. And it helps flush your body, your body's system, right? Mm -hmm. So it gets rid of all the, you know, excess fat. It actually picks up any excess estrogens and flushes that out of your body. So if you're And eating, satiating too, right? Fibers are satiating. Exactly. So like you feel more full when you yes. eat fibers, right? So you're so. less likely to overeat. Yeah. Um, and if you're putting more of that on your plate you're not going to have to worry about counting anything because you're going to feel full. You're going to be good and you're not going to be eating excess calories and you will, you'll just lose weight. It just happens. Yeah. You know, even if you're, you know, coming to me and you don't, you know, that's not your goal to lose weight. Like, mm -hmm. Oh, I want to, you know, do this diet because I want to lower my cholesterol. Chances are you're going to lose weight whether you want to or not mm -hmm. just by eating the way you're going to right. be eating. Even being underweight is unhealthy. Mm -hmm. So you want to stay in that oh, right. little window. Um, and I did, I lost a lot of weight. So I had to look into like, okay, well, you know, how do I gain weight without eating junk, you know? And it just was increase my food and increase, you know, the carbs, increase the protein, but the healthy proteins, not, you know, so yeah. I'm going to that. What, what's a unhealthy, what's a healthy protein? Uh, okay. So healthy proteins are going to come. People from are interested. I'm sure that people yeah, are interested in that. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> Healthy proteins are going to come from your legumes and your beans. Yeah. Those are the highest protein content when it comes to whole plant foods. And then your whole grains like quinoa or brown rice, um, whole wheat, oats, they have protein. And, and actually, all your plant foods have protein. So your vegetables have protein mm -hmm. and your fruits have protein. Yep. So you're going to get protein from all those sources. The unhealthy proteins are going to be your animal products going to be your meat, your eggs, your dairy, your, your, your lean chicken, um, you know, your butter and all that stuff. Those proteins aren't necessarily healthy because they, first off, they don't have any fiber in them. Mm -hmm. There's no fiber in animal products. Yeah. And that's like the biggest thing is, you know, U S diet, um, people are, are consuming less than half of the fiber they should yeah. be co consuming. And so if you're eating, you know, the beans, the whole grains, the vegetables, you're getting the fiber with that protein. So that really helps your body metabolize it better. Yeah. Um, but you're talking to a meat lover. Yeah. Just because I, I do. I used to be too. <laughs> and my whole um, family. <laughs> and I'm sure your, your job is not to, to singularly like stir people away from meats. No. Or, I'm not or plant, or, or I'm sorry, uh, animal based foods. Or. Yeah. I would never tell somebody you can never eat, you know, animal products again. That, because right. that's just going to turn people off. Because, and that's sometimes just going to be unsustainable for some people. So right. my focus is to incorporate more whole plant foods onto your plate and to minimize 
the amount of animal products that you're paying. So you're going to want like 10% or less of your plate can be, you know, animal products. So, you know, you're, you're going to want to try to treat those animal products because there's other reasons why, because there are some really detrimental health factors that go along with eating animal products, which we won't you know, get into all that. That's a lot of details. But if you keep that to 10% or less, treat your animal products as like the side dish. And then, you know, your grains and your vegetables and your beans are going to be the main cores. Mm -hmm. So that, and that's it, you know? Yeah. I, I grew up meat is the main and then meat. everything else is side. Yep. I mean, a lot of us probably it's do. Standard American diet. That's, that's this country. Yeah. 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 Um, I'm as my scope of practice is literally like look to the FDA. <laughs> like I, I'm not someone who it's like, yeah. so it used to be the food pyramid. Now it's the food plate, right. uh, whatever. Um, and I can give generals like ideas of like, you know, like based on like what your, you know, resting metabolic rate, I can recommend this, but I, I can't really tell people what and how much of it to eat. Right. And so I guess we've kind of gone over a little bit. Like what is, what is the plate? Do you have, do you follow that plate or do nope. you have your own? Okay. So you have your own, what does your look, yours look like? And does it fit all sizes or do you have different plates for different people? All sizes. Okay. This will work for everybody who wants to try to eat a healthy diet. So yeah. And, and I, I like that you brought that up the FDA because I mean, that's what, that's what everybody follows, right? Because yeah. they think the government's not going to steer us wrong. Um, okay. So let me, a side question, real personal <laughs> question here. Sure. Salt. Yeah. FDA recommends what is it, 1,900 nine, something milligrams yeah. of salt a day? Is it, where should we be to not die of heart disease? We, well, where are we supposed to be not, at? It is not necessarily salt that's going to cause you. <laughs> well, no, but salt's a big, a big salt thing, right? Salt is yeah. a big thing. You do want to reduce your sodium. Yeah. Um, because, you know, I, I looked at like, um, we were given a can of soup. Oh, don't ever. No, no, no. I looked soup. at, I, no, no, I wasn't going to so eat it. I was not going to eat it. I looked I at it and I'm like, this is three times. Like RDA, if I ate the whole right, can, right, right, which right. who doesn't like if you eat a can of soup, right. if you're going to eat the whole thing, I would eat the whole thing. It was like, it yeah. was like three servings, one cup or whatever is already more than my daily allowance. Yeah. So, I mean, is that accurate? Is that kind of where you want to be for salt intake or what do you, I would say under 1500. Okay. So yours is under 1500. Yeah. Yeah. You want to take that FDA. Yeah, I know, right? I, I can't believe how much salt is in stuff. The sodium content is crazy. Everywhere, yeah. It, and so, yeah, when I try and cook, it's like I'm always looking for no salt added, low sodium, blah, 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 mm -hmm. in, you know, the canned goods, like your beans and your, your vegetables. But, yeah. Um, anyway, sorry. Yeah. Back to the, the food plate. Oh, my food plate. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I didn't thought of something. Squirrel, yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, the food plate. So, my food plate is, you know, looks similar. Legumes, whole grains, vegetables and fruit. Those are okay. your four food groups that you should be focusing on. And uh -huh. dairy does not belong on that plate anywhere. Okay, no dairy. Water is going to be your beverage. Water, coffee, tea, you know, whatever. Um, those are what you should be drinking. Um, but yeah, so late. Well, wait, where's the alcohol in there? Oh, yeah. The, we really shouldn't drink alcohol. Uh, it's yeah, not yeah. good for you, <laughs> but in moderation. Yeah, yeah. Um, but even in moderation, it's really and everyone's like saying it out in their cancer. head like hey what about the alcohol <laughs> yeah and i do i you know i have a glass of red wine here and there of yeah course. um but yeah so legumes fruits vegetables and whole grains that's your plate yeah and everybody's gonna be like where's the protein but like i just told you earlier mm -hmm. proteins in all of those yeah like the highest content is going to be in your beans and then your whole grains and then your yeah. vegetables then your fruit so that's my plate okay very, it sounds pretty simple yeah it is it is you know, and if, if you're like looking at your own plate and you're, you're, you know, doing like a quarter of this, a quarter of that, a quarter of this, a quarter of that. So there's really not a lot of room on there for those animal products that you probably should be avoiding. So that's, that's the, that's the goal, you know, mm -hmm. is to get people to incorporate more whole plant foods onto their plate, foods that have nutrients and vitamins and that actually, you know, help your body metabolize and repair DNA and cell damage and things mm -hmm. like that. The research is it's it's heavily backing more plant based diet. Yeah. You know, I mean all no, maybe all plant based diet. Yeah. yeah. But um, are there other like eggs for example? Let's just kind of go through some foods that pop in mind. Eggs. <laughs> yeah. What about eggs? Can I eat eggs? Eggs are terrible. Eggs are terrible. They're full of cholesterol. They are. Yes. Your body creates as much cholesterol as it needs on its own. So adding eggs in there is just increasing your cholesterol level, and that 
one of the leading causes. Of but it's a precursor to testosterone. <laughs> good testosterone, right? <laughs> testosterone, know. good. Male. You could get that from I, anything. <laughs> like eat your beans, eat your grains. Those are healthy. Those are foods that are going to help. A lot of those, soy, <laughs> we could talk about soy. Soy actually has been shown protective against estrogenic cancer. Just for, so this is a pre, hold on, this is a pre-recording conversation we had. So I was looking at um, a Washington Post article and one of the top questions for my dietitian was, this is the last one actually, um, should I eat soy or will I get man boobs? <laughs> <laughs> I love this. I get this so much. Especially yeah. from, from guys, right? Do you like, really get that a lot? I do. Hmm. It drives me nuts when I hear that. And I, like, I get into like arguments and I'm like, okay, I'm not going to try to convince you if you're <laughs> just going to sit here and argue with me. But it, soy does not give you man boobs. It does not. Um, soy actually is protective against estrogenic cancers. So soy is protective against prostate cancer, is protective against breast cancer. Um, and, and the reason being is... Soy doesn't actually have estrogen in it, right? Mm -hmm. They're phytoestrogens, which come from plants, okay? So if you look at like dairy products now, those are mammal mammalian estrogens that are in those products. Mm -hmm. And the cow is pregnant and the milk <laughs> is being produced, mm -hmm. right? So it is full of estrogens. Yep. So if you're looking at you know, what's going to give me man boobs? I would say probably that glass of milk and that piece of cheese. Yeah. Not the soy products. No. <laughs> yeah. I was laughed when I saw that one. That one, yeah. That one gets me every time. You know, and there's so many questions people ask too. So what are some of the common ones? I, I mean, like... Uh, Where do you get your protein? <laughs> so let's talk yeah. about... Because, I mean, there's a lot of um, fitness viewers here. Yeah. Um, I always recommend quick, easy versions of protein, which a lot um, in our industry revolves around protein shakes and protein yeah. bars. Sure. Those can be the quickest. Because I think one thing that gets in the way of people's um, eating, um, either routine or, or trying to get into a healthier habit, mm -hmm. is that it's, it's less available to you. It's harder. Um, it's more expensive. So the quickest things I, I have people do are, are like, go check out your protein shakes. What there's whey protein shakes. There are soy protein shakes. There's right. pea protein shakes. Yep. Um, which do you ever recommend using shakes? I mean, obviously it's not like a, it's not on your plate, but like right, right for for easy access. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't ever recommend. You know, I don't recommend supplements. I don't recommend you know protein shakes. I, I don't recommend them, but I, I wouldn't tell somebody they can't have them. But you know, what I would say is you know. So whey, that comes from milk, yeah, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say avoid the whey protein. Go with mm -hmm. the pea protein. The most popular one. <laughs> I know, right? Um, and that's, it's sad because actually dairy products are, uh, have been linked to increasing the risk of prostate cancers. Okay. Um, so that's why it's something we should probably stay away from. Um, but I would say the soy protein or the pea protein shakes if you're going to do those. Um, the best way to get your protein is from whole plant foods. And I love that you bring that up, the, the, the cost, right? So beans, beans are probably the cheapest food Gen, on the bean, planet, beans, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? And those are a great source of protein. Like lentils are one of the highest. Um, lentils, black beans, you know, chickpeas. And yeah, that's what I would. And then quinoa, that's another grain that's really high in protein too. Mm -hmm. um, quinoa might be a little pricey, but if you do, you know, oats, rolled oats and you know uh whole wheat pasta those are easy ways to get extra protein and then and you know when talking about protein too i think everybody thinks we need so much protein mm -hmm. and we really don't your I mean, body weight in grams right <laughs> you know it well i mean I, that's I have, the, the i have the calculation here somewhere but well, i mean for those trying to build muscle it's sometimes it's recommended right. to do, eat your it, body yes. weight in grams yes my, it should be 1.27 to 1.7 grams per kilogram of body weight per day. Now that would be for per athletes, yeah. you know, but for an average, you know, average male, 50, 56 grams of protein a day is plenty. Average female, 46 grams a day is plenty. No, but that, that for the athletes is good because I yeah, know um, if you're exercising a lot, you're going to have to have, yeah. You're trying to, you know, get, get big. Yeah. Then you're going to need excess protein, but you don't need 
as much as we think we need. Yeah. Um, but yeah, those are the healthier ways though to get it. It's just through your beans and, and whole grains. I think uh, another big reason why protein is so popular is because you can't really gain fat from it. I mean, you eat excess protein, you're not going to really, your body doesn't use it as fuel, so it's not going to really help you feel like good in your workout. But it also, it also doesn't really transfer into a lot of fat. Right. And, and the, main, the main thing protein does is it helps your cell structures. It helps mm -hmm. rebuild your cells yeah. and you know, helps your muscles stay in shape. Um, but too much protein is bad, especially if it's coming from animal protein, because there's things in animal proteins that actually harm the body and actually will hinder your athletic performance. There are so what, so can you go into more specifics? Like, so like the heme iron, um, okay. that is something that, you know, doesn't do well in the human body. Um, I don't have the specifics. I didn't put that on my sheet. Um, but there's also other proteins that are in animal products that do have a negative effect on the body and some of those proteins actually i think that there's i think it's casein that's in dairy casein yeah um that actually if you drink dairy because you know you want to calcium to build your bones the problem is the casein actually sucks the dairy out of your bones mm -hmm. so you're not really improving your oh, yeah. calcium mm -hmm. right um so yeah there's there a time in my life i i had um had a supplement of casein protein regularly mm -hmm. and then i quickly turned away from it yeah just because you know there's yeah definitely it's the research linked that... to uh to cancers too yeah so mm. okay so yeah let's talk about um um carbs and athletes and let's get into that conversation okay yeah so i'm sure you know carbohydrates are your body's main source of fuel right so that's yeah. where you're going to get all the, the energy you're going to need for a workout. And I think a lot of people try to shy away from carbs because carbs have gotten a bad rap over the years, um, you know, with the Atkins and all that. But carbohydrates are really important. And when working out, that's even more important because you need those carbs to keep your, your stamina up so you can do your workouts. So about 55% of your daily calories should come from carbohydrates, complex carbohydrates though. You know, not like I said before, the, the white flour, the white sugar, the white pastas, you're gonna want those whole grains and you're gonna want the beans and you're gonna want the vegetables and get those carbs that way. So low carb diets or no, no carb diets are something to definitely stay away from. Well, yeah, yeah, because you, you need those carbohydrates, right? I mean, the body was, the body, that's how it functions, you know? Carbs are our main source of fuel. And mm -hmm. yeah, you can go into ketosis if you know, you're know you eating in a, in a keto fashion, but the body was created to do that only like in times of emergency, in times of famine, right? So mm -hmm. that way we just don't die. I'm not um, familiar with the, the keto diet. So what exactly is so, the goal there? Okay, so people go on the keto diet because they, they feel that you know they're gonna drop weight quickly, which is possible and it does typically happen but what they do is they're, they're trying to put their body in a state of ketosis and when you put your body in a state of ketosis it means your body <clears throat> instead of using carbohydrates for energy your body utilizes the fat, fat mm -hmm. that's in your body um, for energy so that's what that's the goal right mm -hmm. they're, they're thinking okay I'm gonna go into ketosis my body's gonna eat up all this excess fat that I have and then I'm gonna lose weight and be skinny mm -hmm. so that's what going into ketosis is but your body isn't meant to be in that state for any long period of time like I mm -hmm. said we're, we have that ability if we're in a time of famine which you know, that doesn't really happen these days, right? right? So there's no need to put your body into that. And, and why would you? Why would you force your body to go into a state that it's not meant to be in? Because they lose weight. They can lose weight if they <laughs> That's what I'm just saying. Like, that's, the, that's the whole idea, That's right? the idea. And I get it. And, and I, you know what? I did keto. I, I'll, I'll admit it. You know, maybe back in like 2017, I, I did it. Um, and now I'm like, Wow. I shouldn't have done that because um, mm -hmm. it's really not good for your body because then you're, you're increasing the fat content then that you're eating mm -hmm. and you're eating a lot of saturated fats, which are, you know, the leading cause of atherosclerosis, which then leads to heart disease. It's so funny because there, there are so many uh, within the industry that, that eating more fats, less carbs is the way to go. And um, it's all based off 
losing weight Mm -hmm. or weight management, Mm -hmm. gaining muscle, losing fat. It's like the, the golden like achievement, like that's where you want to be. And how do I do it the fastest? And a lot of times they're, they're going in different directions, like to gain weight and to lose weight is what you're saying. Like, I, my, everyone always comes to me like, I need to gain muscle and lose fat. Yeah. And it, has, it needs to happen all at the same time in a month. Yeah. And it's it not, they're going in two different directions. Right. So like you kind of have to pick, a lot of people do. Um, so like a lot of people will go through um, periods of time where they're bulking. It's called bulking mm-hmm. season. Mm-hmm. And then there's times of cutting season. Mm-hmm. So lots of, a uh, longer period um, to help gain muscle. You're also going to gain a lot of weight because your, your calories are, are high mm-hmm. in, in order for you to, to increase muscle mass. Um, with your diet, it kind of, is something that can exist, right? The yeah, way your plate. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you can eat, you know, whole food plant based to gain weight, um, and you can eat it to lose weight. So, you know, it just depends on what your goal is. So if you want to gain weight, then you're going to increase your calorie intake and you're going to increase it with, you know, healthy foods like apples, avocados, hummus, quinoa, oatmeal, and you're just going to increase it by like 500 to 700 calories a day to gain weight healthily and you're in your Ah, so we are counting now well that's (laughs) that's if you know you want to gain and have access right yeah right right. um but if you just want to you know eat a a normal healthy diet have a normal healthy you know lifestyle around food you're not going to have to be counting and actually even if you want to lose you're not going to have to count but you know if you want to gain you definitely have to start increasing your calorie intake. Mm-hmm. Um, Gaining is the harder one, in, really in my is. opinion. Yeah, it is, and and it's funny because everybody focuses on losing weight, and mm-hmm. so like if you want to lose weight, I'm not going to make you count anything. But you know, for me, when I had to gain weight, um, I did have to start, you know, like paying attention to how many calories I was eating to make sure I was getting enough, so I would start gaining weight. I think the concept of having a hard time adding food to your diet, mm-hmm. it it goes away from people. Like, I, it's hard. It's hard to eat a lot more than your normal, normal eating. Right. Um, and so, so I think eating, eating less or changing what you eat, right. um, is a little simpler than trying to add more than what you're used to. Right. And, and I mean, if you're working out enough, you're going to need it. Like well, yeah. you're going to feel gonna like hungry. you need it. You're gonna be hungry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, but we've talked about a lot of like what to eat, mm-hmm. but like how much of it, like, so, like maybe I'm, I'm incorporating more lentils and I guess we talked about, I mean, how much protein you need, how much of all of it to eat? Yeah. Like what, like what uh, does the plate look like in terms of like the quant- quantity? Yeah. Yeah. So, so when eating whole food plant-based, so you're going to want to focus on um, <clears throat> having at least one serving of grains per meal. So, you know, say a, a whole grain bagel with breakfast, maybe some peanut butter and some fruit. Um, And then, you know, the legumes, you're going to want to try for one cup of legumes a day. So you can split that up between lunch and dinner, have a half a cup here, half a cup there. Um, Vegetables, you should eat them in in abundance. I mean, just eat them as much as you want. There's no limit on that. Um, And then at least one serving of whole fruit a day. So an apple, a banana, a bowl of berries or whatever. And that's about it. I mean, it's it's pretty simple. Once you get, once you learn it, once you get the hang of it, and start actually incorporating it into mm-hmm. your daily routine. I think I just thought of another another question. Yeah. Uh, some people um, frequently, like a lot of people actually frequently ask me about <clears throat> um, intermittent fasting. Oh. Do you have an opinion on that? Yeah, um, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Um, I almost all of us fast every day, right? Yeah. You, to a certain extent, yeah. Yeah, you stop eating after dinner, you go to bed, so you got those. Like, yeah, that's like if you get a normal, yeah, six right. to eight hours, right? Right, right. Mm-hmm. And and I do that, you know, normally just because I, just the way I am. Um, so the best thing is to like not eat like three hours before bedtime. You really Three don't, hours? Yeah, okay. yeah. You don't really want to be eating right before bed. So three hours before bed, that's when you stop eating and then you just drink some water. And then you wake up in the morning, and it doesn't even matter how long you sleep, right? So you wake up in the morning, and the first thing you do, drink water. Mm-hmm. That's what I do. That's the first thing I do is I start drinking a ton of water, and then I have my coffee. And you know, and, and then I'm not even like really hungry, hungry. So I don't even like eat my breakfast till like maybe 9, 10 o'clock. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I mean, intermittent fasting, there's, there's really nothing wrong with it. Um, it can be helpful. 
with, you know, people who are looking to control their blood sugars and things like that. Um, and weight loss. I think it helps with that too. It's used as a method to cut, to cut fat. Yeah. yeah. Um, from what I, it sounds like, I mean, I don't know what kind of state you're going in, but, um, intermittent fast, I, I don't even know the official, like if there's an official like hour mm-hmm. time, like, uh, where you're fasting. I, when I did it and it, it kind of worked for me to, to slim down a little bit mm-hmm. and it actually worked. I, I had, um, what was it? So from, I believe eight o'clock to eight o'clock at night mm-hmm. to 1 PM the next day was my, was my night. Cause I'm actually a person who doesn't, I used to not eat breakfast. Yeah. Um, and now my wife kind of like makes it regularly for our son and myself. Mm-hmm. So she's been, we've been really on a good, um, breakfast eating habit recently. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was someone who like, I had to just go get up and go to work. Like yeah. I, there's no time for breakfast yeah. and I cut it out anyways. Yeah. Like it's just something that I didn't, um, I mean, I think, um, a lot of people are still in the breakfast is the more, most important meal of the day. Do you yeah. fall into that? I mean, I don't think it's the most important meal of the day. I think, I think mid afternoon is probably going to be, that's, yeah. it's for me, that's typically my biggest meal. Um, and then like a lighter dinner. Um, right, you taper just, off towards the end of the day. Yeah, yeah and it, it just all depends on each person, I think, um, what they prefer. Because, I mean, I do love breakfast, um, but I was like you. Like, I, I was, you know, get ready, get out the door, and I wouldn't eat until, like, I got to the office or something. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I mean, I've, I've never been a big – and I, I'm never really that hungry that early in the morning either. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, it's like when to eat is a big topic too. Like, so – not before dinner recommended, right? Yeah. Or not um, not, not before bedtime. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's about it. I mean, honestly, I mean, you can eat, you know, in the morning. Okay. Making a change, using a holistic approach. Um, go ahead and I guess you can talk about that and um, what that entails. Yeah. So, so you know, the word holistic in, in terms of, you know, health and wellness, right? Yeah. That means incorporating the mind, body, and spirit, right? So... The approach would be, you know, body is going to be your diet, physical, physical activity, exercise, um, and then education or not education. I'm going on the okay, meditation, gratitude, and then community and social interaction. So those are all things that are going to kind of like keep it rounded. But your your approach to diet is going to be that you want to incorporate whole plant foods like foods from the earth right yeah if, if it grows from the earth it's something that you know it's, it's natural it's healthy and it's something you should be eating mm-hmm. and that's why the whole food plant-based lifestyle is a holistic approach because it's using you know natural foods with healthy nutrients and vitamins and minerals that are going to help you know nourish your body and help repair mm-hmm. any kind of damage mm-hmm. and so health and wellness is really the 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 main focus to the approach that you use. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, it's not just about nutrition, right? I mean, nutrition right, yeah. is huge because it has a direct impact, you know, immediately, you yeah. know, you put mm-hmm. a cheeseburger in your body and, you know, an hour later you could see artery function deteriorate. Mm-hmm. Um, so food is huge. Um, but then you also have to be physically active. You know, you don't have to be, you know, a full-time gym goer, but, physical activity is important. You need to get your body moving. Yeah. Um, even, you know, a 20 minute brisk walk for people who, you know, aren't ready to be, you know, working out at the gym every day. Um, and then community and social, you know, cause that just helps with your, your, your mind and it helps you feel better mm-hmm. and it raises your, your mood. And then, you know, meditation, gratitude, breathe, deep breathing mm-hmm. to help keep yourself focused. Um, those all are important. Yeah. So. Well, because if you incorporate the eating with everything else, it becomes a part of your life. Right. Right. So absolutely. Um, um, have you ever like gone through like a, um, a process where one of your clients like kind of like knew that they, I don't know if I can do this long term. Yeah. I'm just trying this out and then found things that they could, well, either they stuck with it or found things that they took from it yeah. and they pulled and were able to do it. I get that most people aren't going to be able to, you know, and it's, it's all based on an individual, right? Everybody's different. They're going to all do this at their own pace. And 
you know, some people are going to be like me, jump in with both feet, full speed ahead. Mm -hmm. And then other people are going to take baby steps. And, and that's okay, you know, and that's my job to gauge where a client's at, you know, with the go factor. And we can work in little steps here and there that are things that are simple that you can include in your everyday diet. And if you continue that for a certain period of time, right, you know, do something over and over again, it becomes a habit. So, you know, you can continue to do this one little thing or this couple little things and then it does just become a habit and then you've already then got a leg up right because you're already incorporating say let's just say we're focusing on whole grains right mm. so now you you're buying the whole grain you know bagels and the whole grain um english muffins you're doing whole wheat pasta you're, you're incorporating quinoa so you've increased your grains you've, you're increasing your fiber Mm -hmm. So that's, that's a good step. You know, yeah. I mean, I'm not expecting everybody to be a hundred percent perfect yeah. because nobody is. I'm not. Um, so I, it's, anybody can try it. You know what I mean? Right. And, and the great thing is, is trying this, there's zero negative side effects. Like it's not going to hurt right. you in any yeah. way, shape or form. That's the big, I mean, that's the biggest takeaway from the conversation is I think, um, when adjusting your eating, whether you want to lose weight or whatever, yeah. Um, I guess an approach like this doesn't, it doesn't hurt you like right. the way, um, maybe adjusting your eating can, right. you know, right. And it's not, it's not about deprivation. It's not about, you know, uh, saying that you can't ever eat something. It's, Hey, let's try this. Let's start incorporating a little bit more of this stuff onto your plate. Mm -hmm. And that's going to help, you know, crowd out the bad stuff, right? That's our whole goal is you know get the bad stuff off and get the good stuff on so as as the more we put on the plate the better mm -hmm. but even if you're only doing it halfway you're still doing good because you're you're incorporating more healthy food yeah you gotta you gotta have people like right um eat things that they're going to eat for exactly. like you know trying to create it as a lifestyle like i mean i have people do exercises and i'm, I'm always um someone who likes the feedback of um, you have to tell me if you hate this thing, right. like if you hate this yeah. particular movement, like I can give you another way to do it. Yes. We don't have to do it this way. Yes. Um, so I, I need that feedback. So if like, I don't like this particular food, yes. well, just, okay, we'll Absolutely. eat that. But then, you know, you have, you, you pick your battles here and there. Yeah. And, uh, as long as you can stick to it, right. It's gotta yeah. be something like you can stick with cause that's the best. Yeah. And that's, that's another, you know, part of my job is to help you make it sustainable. And that, I love that you said that you know, I, I don't like this, right? That's one of my questions on my intake question. Mm -hmm. What, you know, first off, like, you know, if you have any allergies to certain foods, mm -hmm. that's important, but what anything is like an absolute do not like, mm -hmm. right? If you, if you don't like mushrooms, I'm not going to give you recipes that have mushrooms in it, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to give you stuff. And again, going off of the food record that somebody will provide me, I can see what you typically eat, what you, what you lean towards and make suggestions that are going to help you you know, make the substitutes for those kinds of foods. And that way it's something that will be more sustainable because it's going to be to your taste, something yeah. that you like. So yeah, that's really important. I think the means to an end diets, um, really just don't take into account what do I like hate and what do I like and right. what can I, what's palatable to me? What's going to work that I actually can stick with. I think eating is like a journey kind of through your life. Like mm -hmm. you got to figure out the food's, you like things that you can take or just like you know, deal with. Right. I guess there are certain foods I don't like, but I can eat them. Right. And there are very rare, but foods I dislike, like right. pickles. I, I, I just never like, going to, I'm just, like <laughs> just don't give me a pickle no matter yeah. what I'm eating. That's, that's like, I think that's like the only one. Uh, I can pretty much eat anything, yeah. but, uh, but there are certain things I like more yeah. and um, they may or may not contribute to my goal. Yeah. Um, so that's like a good reason to, kind of follow a program or something like you have um, different ideas and I guess you, do you make recipes then I, I have been um, creating my own recipes um, I'm actually working on putting together a, a book like an ebook okay um, it's not published yet I'm still working on it but it's you know it's it's kind of like a, a rundown of this lifestyle what it looks like what's involved and then I have some recipes that I created that I'm kind of throwing in at the end and, I, and I'm making them like super super simple do you have any like current recipes that people can find or um, i have a couple on my website oh on your website okay um and they're 
you know, nothing fancy, but there's a few on my website that are just kind of scrolling through there. Um, it's cool. I mean, just so for people to try, I mean like, Oh, I need something for dinner. I know is going to be healthy for me. Yeah. Oh, you you know, know what? a super easy one. Um, there's like not even really a recipe. So, you know, whole well, yeah. wheat, whole wheat pasta, mm -hmm. so whole wheat spaghetti. And if you don't like the chewiness or the nutty flavor of the whole wheat, you could buy the protein pasta that's made from like beans and chickpeas and things like that. Mm -hmm. I know Barilla has a protein pasta yeah. in a yellow box, um, but I like the whole wheat pasta. Um, so do like a whole wheat pasta, a jar of spaghetti sauce, um, one that has no sugar added. So the one I always buy is like that Newman's own mm -hmm. and it has no added sugar. It has a little bit of oil in there, but that's okay. And then I dump in a can of um, lentils okay. to like make a spaghetti bolognese and drain and, yeah, drain yeah, and yeah. rinse the can of lentils. Yeah. Throw that in there to take place of the ground beef that's typically in there. And then I throw in a bunch of other vegetables. I add in a ton of garlic because I love garlic. Mm -hmm. um, and that's it. That's a great healthy dinner. Right. Yeah. Okay. I think that's a good a good spot to to end. Yeah. Um, well, I thank you for coming on. Um, and definitely a, a a good view of um, eating and just a holistic view to a lifestyle that can be healthy. Um, something that people can adapt. Um, so yeah, I'll have the website on the a link to the website your website on the on the video in the descriptions. And uh, anything you want to add before we go? No, I think we covered a whole lot. I hope we didn't overwhelm anybody. <laughs> no, I mean, it's yeah. just a little talk about eating. and. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you so much for having me. Yeah. I, I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. All right. All right.